On behalf of uh, Bentley Systems, I'd like to thank the Canadian BIM Council uh, for inviting Bentley to uh, Halifax uh, to share our perspective on BIM. Um, we promise not to make this a sales presentation. Um, that's going to help because I'm not a sales guy, I'm a technical guy. Uh, my name is Bob DeFeo. Uh, my background is architectural engineering. I worked for over 20 years at an AE firm. Uh, my background is mechanical engineering. Uh, I made the switch to technology uh, because I liked it so much. I joined Bentley about uh, five years ago. Uh, I'm in the building design and construction group uh, along with my colleague Ray Howard who is an account manager uh, in Bentley and Ray will be able to answer um, at the cocktail reception any questions that you have uh, specific to Bentley. But we'll keep this um, non-sales. We'll talk specifically about uh, BIM, the past, present, and future. I am going to look this way because I can't see this without my glasses on, so I'll just um, work it this way. So Alan earlier talked about um, BIM and the definitions of BIM, and there's a lot of different uh, definitions of BIM, and I, I can verify that uh, for all the clients that I deal with. Everybody has a different definition of BIM. What we've come to learn is what BIM is not. It's not a software. It's not a file format. It's certainly not just for buildings. So that's one of the things that has been made very clear to us. Um, so although it's building information modeling, it's not specifically for buildings. Uh, it's also not just an automated drawing process. And it's not just a 3D model. We did 3D modeling long before BIM, um, so it's not just a 3D model and there's no way it's anywhere close to being fully matured. So let's talk a little bit about the past. So the manual drafting process uh, I was involved with uh, quite a bit and I'll, I'll speak specifically to um, the mechanical one since that's the one I was involved in. So you know in the past I'd have to get a half tone wash off mylar of the architectural background. Obviously it was static and I'd have to draw on top of that and I'd have to use, I'd have to lick the eraser, turn the mylar over, erase the wash off, redo the architecture myself to update the architectural drawing. So BIM helped me a lot. There's no question about that. Um, but that's, that's a little bit uh, about the past. That manual drafting process, um, having all the disciplines separate, um, having to work off a static architectural drawing, specifically architectural drawings, was very, very difficult, and it caused a lot of errors. Coordination basically was done with a light table, um, so they would lay these mylars on top of each other, and they would see if anything was interfering um, in a 2D type environment. So if a pipe was hitting a wall, you'd have to try to verify whether that pipe was actually supposed to go through that wall um, or not. Then we moved on to 2D CAD drawings. So again, manual creation of plans, sections, elevations, again, all static. Um, static drawing scales, line weights, um, all the annotation was separate. Um, none of it was linked together, specifically discipline to discipline, only through referencing. And again, they were all static. Coordination was basically done with color coordinated drawings, so every discipline was assigned a color, and you would do these coordinations based on color, so mechanical was blue, electrical was red, etc., and that's how you would do coordination. Then we moved on to 3D CAD, so not BIM, but you know, all the CAD platforms were able to do 3D CAD at some point. Um, and I know at my firm, a lot of the visualization uh, was done using 3D first. So the architect specifically would model the building in 3D. Again, no intelligence, just tools to be able to create the building in 3D. And then they would create visualization uh, based on that. And then, of course, mechanical would struggle, in our case, to model the ductwork or the piping uh, structural would get involved somewhat, but again, there would be this disconnect um, within the coordination of the drawings.
And that's just an example of being able to reference the files together. Um, and don't blame me for the animation, that's Ray. Um, but the coordination of the drawings together really wasn't a real clash detection or coordination. It was just basically a visual. So again, you would have to go into more detail to actually do a coordination of all the disciplines in a building. So the present, and again, the present could be much different um, for different people. So from our perspective, um, as a software solution company, um, what we've learned to um, understand from our clients is building information modeling in the present is a unified building uh, application. It incorporates all disciplines and practices. So it's not just, again, in all cases, you know, the typical um, example that's given is architectural, mechanical, structural, uh, maybe plumbing. Um, but it's really all disciplines and all practices. So again, one product, one installation of specific software for all the different practices, and then one unified data set that's shareable across all disciplines and all practices within the project. So ease of use, interdisciplinary tools in a common design environment, um, design concepts, uh, universal tools for the modification of building elements, uh, sharing content and data transparently across all disciplines. In our case, the federated model approach to be able to build the model um, specifically, again, because of the wide area network and the size of these BIM models, um, you know, it's, it's possible to be able to develop these things federated and bring them together as one. So specifically build them, bring them together, and then bring them together within the master model. The intelligence is extremely important, so all the data that's integrated within the BIM model is very important, so whether you call it a family or a part, um, whether it controls symbology or properties, um, obviously you should be able to create your own from scratch. And then that, data, that data, database is extremely important, um, has multiple uses. Uh, you'll be able to track object information. You'll be able to link it to the model. You'll be able to output it um, to different information. And you'll be able to also create your own uh, catalog types. So this is just an example of our tool and how it basically brings together some specific disciplines, so we'll just talk specifically about architectural, basic tools for structural, and some basic mechanical tools. So the way our software works, and we've heard Revit mentioned quite a bit, um, but our tool basically allows you to work in one environment, and I, I believe Revit does too, um, but basically you can launch one tool and be able to design all the different parts uh, of your building, both architectural and engineering. Some of the architectural modeling tools that are available currently in BIM, uh, push-pull, uh, space planning, obviously, um, parametric building content for walls, slabs, roofs, doors, windows, curtain walls, again, all parametric, stairs, handrails, and of course much more. Facilities information, casework, equipment, furniture, intelligent objects, some structural modeling tools, concrete, steel, columns and beams, again, parametric, foundations, slabs and decks, trusses, bar joists, obviously accurate modeling, um, profiles from 20 different international countries, cutbacks and copes, and then the ability to import and export uh, analysis, in this case, RAM and STAD. Mechanical mo uh, modeling tools, obviously ductwork. Again, parametric design of the ductwork. So again, if anything changes, it automatically updates the model. Automatic fittings, installation, components and equipment that are available for the HVAC system, sizing tools, Calculators. 
piping modeling tools. I'm going to run through this quickly. Uh, catalogs that are available, uh, components and equipment again, parametric pumps, uh, sprinkler heads, vessels, as well as slope piping. And then electrical modeling tools for circuiting, um, as well as visualization. And then from the BIM model, so the, the big difference from 3D to, to BIM is the automatic creation of, of, of drawings. So everything is derived presently from the BIM model. So all the drawings are created from the, the BIM model. All the sections, all the elevations, they're all dynamic. They're all cached. Um, there's 3D views that are available. There's all the resymbolization that was talked about earlier, even in Revit, that's available. And all the automated tags that are intelligent based on the actual object instead of just actually adding something in um, to the drawing. Analysis and reports are very important. So the ability to export that information, automatically create your schedules. I remember, you know, having to draw line by line and entering first manually by hand all the information in a schedule and then moving on to being able to do that in a CAD environment and being able to import maybe an Excel schedule. But now again, all from the BIM model, you get all the information and import it into your schedule and create it automatically. Did I go backwards? I did. Sorry. Bills of materials and reports, again, directly from the BIM model. Quantity reports, again, directly from the BIM model. Lengths, areas, volumes, counts. Cost estimation. Again, all from that single source of truth that was talked about earlier. There's also bi-directional capabilities, so the ability to go back and forth between things like RAM and STAD, and to be able, the ability to be able to do any kind of analysis um, on the model and then send that information back to the BIM model. Talked about visualization earlier, so again, that's just all part of the BIM process now, where you know it used to be hand, hand drawings or models that were built by hand to 3D CAD that we create a visualization with, everything again comes from that single source of truth or that BIM model. And then collaboration is extremely important to our clients from a project standpoint. So the ability to be able to bring all the work in progress, so no matter what software you're using, and I'm not really crazy about this slide because there's not really enough room to list all the different softwares that can be used on a project. But the ability to bring all those softwares together to a single to a single source and have everybody work in the same environment is incredibly important to most of our clients. And the way we do that is we manage and publish that data. So I heard IFCs uh, mentioned earlier, um, PDFs are a typical deliverable, but our interface specifically is iModel. So basically it's an information exchange and I'll talk about that a little bit more in detail uh, later on, but it's used specifically for collaboration between disciplines. I'm not very good at this. And then the ability to view, analy analyze, and augment the information. So Navigator is our tool for collaboration, so whether it's to um, collaborate between disciplines, create clash detections, view all of the data that's, in, that's included in all the models, um, create markups, um, share that data um, with other file types, um, and then publish that out to ProjectWise, which then allows you to view that data from anywhere and any device. So we currently have um, mobile devices that are available that allow you to view, walk through, and mark up the model in the field from your iPad. And they're currently working on, I believe, um, Windows, uh, I, I guess it's RT, um, as well as the Android. Android's a little bit closer than Windows, but um, there's a lot of research going into that. 
um, but it's already complete um, for the iPad. So you have the ability to hold it in your hand, walk through the model, visualize the entire model, all disciplines, all aspects of the model, be able to mark up that model, send that mark up directly back to that single source project wise for collaboration for the entire team. And that's just another example of the efficiency of the federated project data through ProjectWise. So I talked a little bit about iModels and that's an important part of the present BIM process. So the ability to be able to take the information um, from any source and to be able to collaborate with different parts of the project team. So again, whether it's um, clash detection, uh, whether it's data, uh, whether it's information exchange um, or just plain 3D graphics visualization, you're able to do that through our iModel capability. And we do have a plugin that's available for uh, the majority of the BIM platforms, including Revit. So let's talk a little bit about the future. And again, um, this is a future that um, our perspective of this future is based on client feedback and some, some of this stuff is actually presently happening. In fact, I think all of it is, and, but it's relatively new so we put it in the future and we'll talk a little bit about it. So hyper modeling has been around um, at least from the Bentley perspective um, for probably more than a year, maybe a couple years. Um, but basically the process is the fusion of the drawings to the model. So that relationship that the drawings have specifically to the model, including the sheets, the sections, the actual drawing, 3D cuts, any part or view of the model can then be augmented back to um, the hyper model or the model itself. So an example of this, and I hope this shows, is this is a simple model that has hyperlinks attached to it. So from the model, I can go directly to a 3D view or a 3D cut of that model. And again, this is all predefined. And then from that, I can jump specifically to a drawing or a sheet that has that drawing on it. And then from that sheet, I can link or I can create sections. And then from that section, or from that sheet, I can go directly to the section cut and I can place that section cut directly on the model. So the feedback on this currently has been really, really good. Uh, a lot of people like this ability. Um, the ability to be able to see the actual wall section, um, where it's created from on the model um, is extremely important to people. So this is what we call future, but it is presently available. Generative components, again, um, currently exists. Um, I'm not a generative component expert, but what I will say is it's the ability to be able to feed data into a model and then have that data um, automatically change dynamically um, what the model looks like or parts of the model or pieces of the model. So for an example, if I run this AVI, the data has been created. Hopefully this will run. And there's some little slides that have been created to create, to change the fin, the fin depth um, and widths on these, on the fins. And then once they're once they're changed or modified, you can see that they dynamically change uh, within the model. So the ability to be able to feed this data, whatever data it is, into a specific object or element, and then to be able to dynamically change um, that data within the model. Point clouds are something that um, we're continuing to deal with. Um, so the, 
first of all, the ability to be able to take this massive amount of information and to be able to stream it across a wide area network for people to be able to see this information is one challenge. And then to have tools to be able to manipulate, change the data, and turn that data into actual object data. Um, again, so this goes back to the laser scanning, creating a point cloud, and being able to integrate that with the BIM model. So we do have point cloud tools. We have the ability to bring the information directly into the model. Uh, we also have the ability to do photorealistic design visualization um, and integration into the existing models in CAD. Analysis, again, is extremely important. We do have energy analysis tools. Um, our specific tool um, is based on um, the, I just lost the, um, we use a specific engine and I can't, for whatever reason my mind just went blank, but um, the tool was used with the BIM model to create um, an energy analysis model that shows the efficiencies and inefficiencies uh, based on number one lead as well as ASHRAE standards as well as other standards um, around the world that give you feedback on um, things like specifically the energy within the building. So um, are the HVAC systems um, efficient? Are, is the glazing efficient? You could swap out the glazing very quickly. Um, are, the, are the walls, are, like I did a, um, I did a demo, not, not really a demo, but a, I was on a team that actually did a, um, a specific test with different wall types that included things like rammed earth that showed the different um, energy analysis results that show the differences between all those different scenarios, and this was specifically in a desert. GBXML industry format um, and integrated with a variety of other um, solutions as well. Augmented reality, um, I'm not an expert on, but this is something that's relatively new um, at Bentley. And basically, oops, what this is or what this does is this allows you to actually visualize, in this example, um, an actual excavation or what's underground in a specific location. So the ability to be able to take this intelligent model, select a specific area, have the ability to visualize what's actually there underground, and then there's some other specific tools um, that you have available to be able to change the lighting um, and the shading. Uh, there's also two tools that are coming up here um, that also allow you to um, cut through the model and show different sections of the model so you can see how you can move it back and forth. Um, you can visualize the risers that are going up into the buildings as well. So you have a very, very clear view um, of what's actually there. And like I said, this is a relatively new uh, technology that we have. And then the ability to be able to slice through the model and see an actual section cut um, through that in a separate window. So again, this is part of the future of being, being able to be able to, not virtually, but actually see what's there, be able to visualize what's underground, be able to know just from a model um, what you're dealing with. So obviously, um, there's more to come. Uh, so we have a lot more. Uh, research that continues to go on at Bentley. Uh, we continue to work with our clients. We continue to focus on the future of BIM, whatever that happens to be, whatever it's defined uh, to us as our clients. So um, there's a lot more to come. And again, uh, I don't think we've really even scratched the surface yet. So with that, I will turn it over to Ray and he will just go through some 
uh, case examples. We don't have any case examples from Halifax. However, we do have case examples of our BIM products as well as um, our generative components and other products that we use. So Ray, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, when you think about Bentley software, uh, some of you guys know the name, some don't, but we've been around for about 30 years now. We serve many, many thousands of customers globally. Of course, I work primarily in the U.S. and Canada region, and yes, I am serving Canada from the south, from Georgia. So that's where the accent comes from, just if you are wondering. But we do have many thousands. You probably know a lot of these logos on the board already. There's more stacking up every day as we move forward. So quickly, just moving through a few of these, uh, we talked earlier about parametric design, generative components, maybe organic design. This is a perfect example of where sometimes, let me stop this a little bit. It's a good example of where generative components can be used to automatically change and really help with organic design. So we got a couple of other generative component examples in here as well. Now here's a good case of our point tools the cart and point tool software actually being used on some old, old as built Stonehenge. So as you can see, Stonehenge has been around a long time. You can't see a lot of the detail that's there on the model on the left, the actual photograph. But when they went through and scanned this, that laser scanning is so precise, you could actually go in and see images that have been put there thousands of years ago on that imagery. So we have a whole case study of this out online. If you want to get access, just give me a call. I'll be more than happy to point you right to that. But this was a pretty exciting case for me. Bob knows why, of course. But we'll get into that a little later also. Here's another great example of generative components and its use uh, with organic design. A lot of changes occur during the arcing on that, as well as this one, when the arcs and all these angles and components change rapidly as they fluidly move, generative components is a great tool that helps facilitate that. Now here's a great example of some LIDAR, some aerial flown point cloud data. As you can see, this was an extremely large area flown. You're really not going to do this from a, a robot station or a stationary unit, so you need to really go up in the air to get this kind of thing. Uh, but it's great, great use when you start doing transportation, horizontal design and layout because you can scan multiple area and see that data in a 3D format and then interface with it. You can use augmented reality, like Bob spoke about earlier, and actually blend both those environments together, both the point cloud data and the model and the design all live right there at the same time. Again, some other great examples of where our architectural, structural, mechanical, electrical tools have been used in the world of Bentley great renderings as well. Another great example of generative components and the complexity of design. This was a great example of our structural products being used. And of course more examples, architectural, structural, electrical, all coming together with a final result. Stunning work over in England as well. Of course, also looking at sustainability and green roof design in England. Ray, if you go back to that one slide. Yes, sir. One new slide. This one. So I must have blocked it out because I was on the team, but this Energy Plus was the analysis engine uh, that's used by our analysis tool. And that was used specifically on this building. So there's a lot of different capabilities that were built into this building uh, for ventilation. Um, so a lot of the skin uh, was developed to actually enhance and um, make the ventilation much, much more efficient um, based on the way this building was constructed. So a lot of work using energy analysis tools uh, went into this specific building. And again, using Energy Plus Engine. So energy analysis, by the way, is not available yet. We still have it in it Alpha. Is available. It is available yes. now. Okay, so just released. I didn't know. I should know that one. Okay, excellent. So that one's on the market now. It will incorporate, of course, with EcoSAM Building Designer as well. 
Of course, the green roof example we were just looking at. A more stunning work here a little closer to home to Halifax over in Boston. Incredible architectural and structural again, a lot of curtain wall. Here you can see some work in England. You actually see some photographs showing this tower going up. So this is some live work that was going on recently. I love the curved curtain wall. Great use of generative components and other products. And that'll be it, guys. We'll open up for questions. Just a quick question about um, the fact that you have a single platform and all of the consultants are working within that platform. Can you work simultaneously on one model? Or is it importing a structural model, a mechanical model, an architectural model into one? Are you, I guess, are you, are you all working on one model in real time? No, uh, is, the, is the simple answer. Um, we, the way the product was developed, and I don't want to speak for development, but uh, my history with the product has been that it's been more of a federated approach because of the wide area network and because the models get much, much too big. Now, again, with live referencing, you have the ability to bring all that stuff together. So you have the ability to be able to break up the model however you see fit. So whether it's one architectural model, one mechanical model, one structural model, et cetera, or if you want to break it up even further than that, um, again, more for um, work across the wide area network, you can certainly do that. But again, all that is still bought together through referencing, and it makes it much, much smaller and much more manageable doing it that way, in our opinion. Just uh, based on, again, the RISC uh, thing that we recently had, there was a some mention of Bentley and, uh, and what you were mentioning today, talking about the uh, new software. Uh, it seems that Bentley has a, an attention towards uh, cross-platform collaboration, for instance, you know, be able to import and work with a Revit model, or uh, maybe you have, I'm not sure, what are the other kind of cross-platform kind of <coughs> abilities that, that you have developed with Bentley? Um, be able to collaborate with other BIM models on, on other software products. So specifically, it would be the I model, yeah. um, but depending on what we call them verticals, but what specific discipline you're talking about, it could be um, a difference. So energy analysis, it would be GBXML. Mm -hmm. um, BIM models uh, across all the disciplines, it would be I models. So we mm -hmm. have the ability. So for instance, as an example, if an architect were using Revit mm -hmm. and an engineer were using our mechanical tool, Mm -hmm. they could collaborate through iModels um, because there's a plug-in for Revit specifically for that. Okay. And um, if they were using energy analysis tools uh, to do different parts of the process, so if our tool were doing the, um, the energy part or the HVAC part, that efficiency part, and another tool was doing the daylighting part, we could export that information out via GBXML and share it that way. So again, depending on what different software you're collaborating with, there's different methods of actually exporting that information. Okay, so your, your approach is that you have a plug-in for certain other software that uh, allows you from Bentley to, to take in something from outside, from, from uh, Revit. That's so true, that would be I models. Yeah, I models, okay. So th there isn't this approach of a, a, a base language that can be, you know, when we talk about two-dimensional uh, CAD, we talk about DXF, you know. There isn't that kind of language for, for Bentley as of yet, you know, the uh, universal way of, of, of communicating BIM data across the Oh, we, we, we do DXF as well. I mean, we, we have... But that becomes a Biden... We model. have that capability, but that doesn't really contain any data. No, it's just, so, the, it's just the lines uh, or the... The, the I-model is more for the information exchange mm -hmm. as well. So the graphics are kind of a byproduct. They come with it, yeah. but the information part of it is what comes across. So when you view... So if you were to take a model from a different BIM software, uh, let's say Revit, mm -hmm. and you export that through iModel capability, you can view that on an iPod, uh, I'm sorry, an I iPad, mm -hmm. not on an iPod, in our navigator tool, and you'll be able to view the entire model, walk through the model, as well as view all the information that's contained in the Revit model. Okay. 
And with regards to uh, project project data from a producer or manufacturer, do you you know do you have is there a lot of things that are produced for Bentley, or do you import something about a product data from from other kind of basic language? I, I think it's both. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, we, again we have the ability to bring it in from um, other formats, but we mm -hmm. also have the ability um, to bring in it. So I mean uh, again a lot of this stuff is still in DXF or DWG format. Mm -hmm. We have that ab ability. I heard um, somebody mention before that it was extremely important to keep um, that open technology and Bentley is fully open. So we have the ability, for instance, in our um, microstation software, mm -hmm. uh, because we have this relationship with Autodesk and AutoCAD, um, to open an AutoCAD file natively in microstation without any translation. And that's literally opening a DWG with the Bentley tool and not having any translation. So DWG, DXF, iModels, GBXML, IFC, there's all different kinds of capabilities uh, to be able to collaborate. Okay, that's great, thanks. You're welcome. Hi, uh, Tom Strong from Liston again. Um, so uh, can you give us a little bit of idea around your customer base, like are, are most of your customers in the U.S. or like where are they located gra like, uh, like geographically and then, and then what sector as well, like do you find that say more like infrastructure clients tend to specify microstation, that sort of thing, or is it, are you finding like equal across uh, like all types of construction? Sure, sure. So that's definitely a good question, Tom. Uh, you know, we are a global company, so we have a lot of customers in the UK, across the USS as well, uh, the US as well. Uh, Canada is a good market for us, and we have a big stronghold, of course, with owners, in particular municipalities. So a lot of you guys may do work for municipalities, and you'll see Bentley requirements or DGN requirements. Uh, so civil, even plants, uh, process power water treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants, we have a huge stronghold of that up here even in the Canada region. So our building information modeling tool, the current one, came out about less than two years ago potentially. Right, and it grew out of building systems, is that right? I'm sorry, say it, it grew out of building systems? Like our building systems? Yeah, it's been a lot longer. Right, right, has it? Okay. So uh, the product grew out of a previous product that we'd have and really grown into the current BIM product we have. So we're looking at now at expanding into Canada, into the Brazil area, into South America as well. So I don't know if that helps or not, Tom. I think, I, I think in, um, I don't want to defend right here because, uh, but because of the way Bentley's structured, there's a lot of regional clients as well as global clients. So we could certainly get you a list specifically in Canada of all the different companies that use Bentley software that we're involved with. And, and again, it's we have over 300 products that, that go from you know architectural design all the way through to asset management. So again, depending on the type of company it is, um, we probably have um, some kind of a software that's being used um, specifically for that. But we can get you that, Tom. Sure. And another good item here, guys, is to think most of the shops that I deal with are the larger companies in particular because I'm just in corporate sales. But most of my client base, I would say 95% to 99%, they, they run multiple platforms anyhow. They have Autodesk, they have Bentley, some have Archicad. I see all kind of platforms used in all these companies because each different owner may require something differently. And then of course, you guys as consultants or contractors are having to serve those clients. So as Bob mentioned, really I think it's around 350 products when you look at our total product line. It's really enormous. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate your time.